Hello everyone, it's daytime! You can call me Buster, and welcome to the Buster Beachside channel, where today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your very own sandbox scenario in OpenRCT2, which should be backwards compatible with Vanilla RCT2 and RCT Classic on mobile and Steam. This has been a long time coming for this channel, as I made a tutorial back in 2015 in the vanilla version of RCT2, which, with the release of both OpenRCT2 and Open... or not OpenRCT Classic, just RCT Classic, uh, since then, has become somewhat outdated. So, here we go. To get started, just go ahead and click on the red toolbox and go to Scenario Editor. Now, already we're on the most tedious part. Here we have to choose what rides we want, and also up here we can select what kind of footpath we want, what kind of scenery we want, and it's kind of a lot to take in all at once. I would suggest starting with the rides, which what I like to do is I'll go through the shops and stalls and just check mark the ones that I know I'm going to want to build at some point, like uh, I like building that. Then after I select all of the stalls that I want, I move on to the water rides and then the thrill rides and the roller coasters and so on until I've just filled up the maximum, which you can see down here is 128. But just go through this, uh, choose whichever ones you think you might use. I might do a boat hire with bumper boats, I might do a log flume. So just go through this and figure out what you want to have in your scenario. So there we go, this is everything I chose, nothing too special, mostly just the generic vanilla stuff. And as you can see I hit the maximum of 128 objects, so now it's time to move on. So next we can choose our footpaths, so we can actually select every single one of these because there's only 15 different types, but you have a max of 16, so might as well do that. Thanks, thanks for that loud car. Thanks, I enjoy it, I appreciate it. So up next is scenery. This can be a little bit complicated because you can click the advanced tab and that opens up a whole bunch of extra stuff where you can go and choose every singular piece of scenery you want from every different set if you wanted to, which, you know, if you want to, might take you a year and a half, but I prefer not to do that. Instead, what I'll do is I'll select what I like the most for example, I like the space looking benches, I like the pirate litter bins, I like these stadium seating, I like the stone bench. You have to have the queue line TV, guys. You have to have this. I'm just joking, you don't have to. There's a max of 15 on the path extras here, so once you reach that, go ahead and move on. Now, this part gave me some trouble when I was testing this out. The scenery groups, some of these tended to glitch out my game like for example I think it was the Egyptian theming yeah you see here it gives me warning too many objects selected not all objects in the scenery group could be selected which is strange considering I haven't selected anything else yet and I found that whenever I saved my scenario with one of those it would kind of break it and it wouldn't be compatible with the older versions of the game so if you see that I would suggest just unchecking it. If you really want something out of one of those sets, then maybe consider going into advanced and finding the things that you want and adding it that way. Basically, if you see that, maybe consider deselecting the bigger ones and finding a smaller one. You can see now that abstract theming is working fine now that I deselected future theming and now suddenly future theming is not working. It's because future theme has a whole lot of different objects in it. There are a couple others that you should probably avoid, um, but I'll leave it up to you to figure out which ones those are. I'm just going to choose my favorite ones and we'll move on. By the way, you have to have the spooky theming because as you can see there, that's, uh, that's Mr. Bones of Mr. Bones' Wild Ride fame. Once you've selected all the scenery you like, it's time to move on to the park entrance, which you can only choose one of these, but you can choose from all these different kinds. Personally, I prefer the park entrance building. Oh, but you have to deselect the old one first, and then select the new one. 
there you go. Then finally is the water. It doesn't actually show you a preview, but it's just what it sounds like. It changes the color of all the water in your park. If you want regular blue water, just choose natural water and move on. All right, now that we're finished here, go ahead down to the lower right corner and hit landscape editor. So now you'll see we have a big open map right here. The first thing you should do if you're doing this in OpenRCT2 is go ahead and click there on the 144 by 144. You can see the max is 254. If you just type 999 and hit enter, it'll automatically go to the maximum for you. So here it is. Here's our giant map. Can't even zoom out entirely to cover the entire thing. But you'll notice one thing. There is no park ownership here. There aren't any fences. So what we'll have to do next is mark all of this land as owned. So to do that, you select this right here and then make sure land owned is checked. It should be by default. And then you'll have this little one tile thing. If you do like that, you can mark everything as owned. Obviously that's gonna take forever. So what you do is click right here and type in 64 and wha-bam. We have a big old thing and then you can just click and drag and mark the entirety of the land is owned. Now be a little bit careful because on my copy of it, when I go off this side and this side, it like makes my cursor disappear for some reason. So just kind of slowly mark those edges. Make sure you get those. But then just double check that you haven't left any open spots and you're good to go. Now this is for building the park entrance and this guest icon right here is for telling the game where the, the, the peeps are going to spawn in. I like to put that straight in the middle of the map, but obviously it would be really tedious to count this out. So here's a little trick you can use. Go into the landscaping tool, make it 64, and then choose something other than grass. Go to the very edge and make a mark like so. There we go. And then go next to it, make another mark just like so. Now choose something other than that. And then just to prove that this works, if you go here and mark it and go here, you'll notice that it lines up perfectly, which means that this spot right here in the middle, that's your middle spot. You don't say. So what you can do is you can set your entrances like that, for example. Me, I like to set them up kind of like so. You'll notice that it marks the land as unowned. So if you want to, just go ahead and do that. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and change everything back to grass. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Hold on. Maybe I should have mentioned, if you want to just paint the terrain, use the paintbrush, and then you won't change the terrain at all. So the next thing you'll need is some footpath for the guests to come in on. For mine, I'm going to go ahead and use the cobblestone path because I like it the best. Go ahead and uh, connect it to the edge of the park. And then you'll notice you can't place the guest entry point inside the boundary of your park. There is one naturally right here, but I don't think it works unless you uh, mark it as not owned. So just mark these two tiles as unowned and then you should be able to place it. Now make sure the arrow is pointing in towards your entrance. Anyway, you can only have two guest entrances. If you try to add a third one, it won't work. It'll just get rid of the first one. So there you go. Place those however you like. Once you've done that, you're pretty much done. All of this area around here outside of the fences is yours to work with. So you can go ahead and decorate that once you start playing. Next, we're going to move on to the invention list, which OpenRCT2 has a nice little feature where you can just move all items to the top. Otherwise, you have to use the big old grabby hand and do everything one by one. Or you can just go pop and there they are. Next, we move on to the options. So this is kind of like the magic button that turns a regular scenario into a sandbox. You just click no money and suddenly you don't have to worry about money. Now, I am not going to click that because I am announcing here that I shall be starting a new Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 sandbox mode playthrough, but this time I'm going to be having money enabled. That's right. So I'm going to set up some things here. I don't want there to be any loan. And then the maximum loan size. Unfortunately, I can't click this to 
automatically selected any bigger, so I'll just hold plus until it gets to like a hundred thousand or something. If you're making your own scenario, of course, feel free to turn off money. I like the uh, cha-ching, cha-ching of all the money that you get because money is good. I like getting lots of money, so that's how I choose to play my scenario. Next, we have the guest options. These I might recommend you leave unchanged unless you want to up the amount of cash that the guests have on average. I might do that just because it's a money sandbox that I'm making. Guest initial happiness, hunger, thirst, and then whether or not they prefer more or less intense rides, which if you don't check mark either of these, it'll just be all across the board, which is what I prefer. And finally, we have the park options, such as the cost to buy land and construction rights, which we don't need to worry about because we own all of the land. You can change the climate. I like to do warm because that makes it rain less often, I think. One thing I should mention is I prefer to change this to free park entry and pay per ride. That's kind of important. I should have gone over that, but I forgot to until now I'm editing this in, in post. So there we go. And then there are some other things that make it a little bit more difficult, such as forbidding tree removal, forbidding landscape changes. Obviously, we don't want any of that. And now we're on the home stretch, so let's move on to the objective selection. In OpenRCT2 and RCT Classic, we simply choose Have Fun. But if you're doing this in vanilla RCT2, you won't have this option. So for that, I would choose Build 10 Roller Coasters, because it's the only one that doesn't have a time limit on it. Of course, we're going to choose Have Fun. Then you simply choose your park name, the scenario name, Choose where you want it to show up in the main menu, and then you can write a little description for your park, so I'll do that right now. A sandbox scenario, but with the satisfaction of seeing those sweet dollar signs pop up as guests pay for your rides. With a large starting amount and a forgiving loan interest rate, even beginner tycoons can join in on the fun. There we go, and that's about it. That's the end. Now the last thing to do is just to save our scenario. So if you're in OpenRCT2, it'll give you this. Just go up here and click New File, and then I'll go ahead and click OK on Money Sandbox. I already have an old one that was broken because of that uh, scenery thing that I mentioned earlier, so I'm just going to go ahead and overwrite that. All right, so apparently, don't be like me and try to overwrite an existing scenario because I guess it just won't work. Uh, but as long as you make sure to save it, it should be OK. I'll just open this to show off. Here it is. It's a little bit different from how I set up the last one, but here is your sandbox scenario. And just to uh, prove that you can indeed build out here and such, there we go. So as I said, I am going to be starting a video series on this new sandbox scenario here in OpenRCT2. And the scenario I made in today's video will be available for download in the video description should you be interested in playing along with me. So if you want to make sure you see those videos when they come out and stay tuned, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and maybe hit that bell so that you can get notifications. Right now I have a goal as a channel where I'm trying to hit 1000 subscribers and we recently hit the 500 mark so we're already halfway there. If you guys want to go ahead and help me get to that point I'd be ever so grateful. But until I get around to uploading that, thank you guys ever so much for watching. Please remember to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe before you go. But until next time, goodbye everyone, it's night time.